Welcome to the Climate Viewer Maps tutorial. My name is Jim Lee and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how to use the climateviewer.org website to view some of the latest maps um, that we've created. Uh, on the front page you'll see that we have the latest maps are listed right here. You can go to any one of these simply by clicking on it. And when you do that you will come to an individual map page like the Copen Climate Classification System and you will see that there's a list of markers over here click any one of them to fly to that location click on the marker icon that will bring up information about it some of these will have links that will take you to external websites uh, use at your own discretion so over here on the side you have the home button which will bring you back out um, plus will zoom in minus will zoom out to set the base map you click base map right here and you can change it to Bing Maps or Dark Matter, um, and that'll allow you to change the background layer. You can make the map a flat map by clicking here. And when you zoom out a little bit, all the icons will pop back into place. Or you can switch it back to a globe, which will do the default. This will bring up the timeline at the bottom. This will turn on the sunlight so you can see where day and night is. And this will minimize that to get it out of your way. To bring it back, just simply click Controls. Then, um, underneath each map is a description of the map. The map type. As you can see, this is a Google Earth KML file. And, uh, you know, you can download the map source itself. Attribution and license. Almost every map that's been created by me or George Stiller is Creative Commons, non-commercial, share alike. Um, international which means you're free to share and adapt this remix it as long as you give attribution to the original uh, web page you got it from so you need to link back to this page uh, where you downloaded it from so let's go back real quick and um, underneath that is map categories this is also up here on the top menu you can go through each individual category we have alerts and weather these are all real time usually they're updated anywhere from every five minutes to an hour um, live satellite views many different categories there history and science um, you know if you go to any one of these pages you will see that all of the map previews are shown in the individual map pages uh, so you can check those out um, and then finally underneath that the granddaddy of them all climate viewer 3d and that's what the bulk of this tutorial is going to be about the tutorial video you're watching right now will be right here and it's also available on the climate viewer 3d app and our most some of our most popular maps are listed down here at the bottom you can flip through them the open source software that i used to create climateviewer.org and of course um, all of this is supported by people like you uh, so if you want to support climate viewer you can do it on patreon paypal or gofundme that'd be greatly appreciated or sign up for our newsletter so let's go up here and at the very top you see climate viewer 3d this is where all the fun happens um, this is our you know major app uh, for combining all of the maps together so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a couple of examples of how this works so i live in sumter south carolina i can search for that here and you can see sumter se usa and it'll fly you straight down to my hometown um, and then if i wanted to see that in a satellite view i can bring up the sentinel view or I can check, click on ESRI satellite or Bing map satellite. As you can see, they all have different, they're pretty similar, um, but they're very accurate. And then we have multiple other views, as you can see down here. Uh, you can scroll through them. Lots of different ways to color the map, make it look really cool. Um, even the earth at night. So you can see where all the, the pretty lights are and where are there no there are no humans <laughs> um, if you don't see a light that's not a major uh, source of uh, people pollution or light pollution um, and then down at the bottom you can click on 3d terrain so if you do that let's go back up here to the top and we're going to turn on uh, Bing maps and we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to turn on 3d terrain and I'll give you an example of what that looks like so you come over here 
Um, let's uh, just close this out and let's put in the Grand Canyon. And we'll fly over to it. There we go. And you can come in here and what you'll see is that now everything is in glorious 3D terrain, which is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So you can actually turn that on by going to the bottom of the ma base map list and ch clicking 3D terrain or 3D terrain with water mask. Um, that'll bring up the actual 3D imagery of the planet, which is just phenomenally gorgeous. All right, so now that you know the basics, let's get into the rest of this. Um, under options, you can see the instructions. Um, this will tell you a little bit about Climb Viewer 3D. Obviously, there's my mug and my email, so if you have any problems, feel free to email me. Instructions, once again, the video tutorial you're watching now will appear here. View controls for mouse and for touch are listed right here so you can tell how to you know zoom in tilt the view and rotate it with your fingers and then system requirements if you don't know why climate viewer 3d is not working for you or any of the maps on climate viewer it is probably because you do not have webgl support webgl is a 3d open source um you know application that allows you to do 3d in your browser with no plugins so you don't have to download any software um, like you did back with Google Earth. It is uh, free and open source based on a program called Cesium. So if you want to check out why you don't have support, you can simply click on that and see, yes, I have WebGL 1 support and WebGL 2 support. And it's also about the browser. Does the browser support WebGL? So I know that um, Chrome and Firefox have the best um, support for WebGL and some of uh, the other ones like Safari, IE Edge. Um, but once you get into like older versions of Internet Explorer, it's probably not going to work. So that may be part of your problem. Try a different browser. Um, but, you know, that that's up to you, the browser you choose. And some of the, you know, older Android obviously aren't going to work. Older iPhone. Um, keep that in mind. Um, also, under the options and instructions, you have an Earth monitor. And this is basically everything that's not built into Climate Viewer 3D is right here. So you can go and you can click on RSOE EDIS and see all the latest disasters from around the world. You can click on Go 16 and see the satellite imagery animated from that. Um, you know, just lots of links for you to dig into there. So this is a, a way to monitor your world from ship tracking to plane tracking, um, weather, wind, you name it, it's in here. Uh, space weather monitor, uh, monitoring and also like solar tracking. Lots of stuff in here and I'm constantly adding to this list. If you'd like to see something added to the list, please submit a link by email. Um, you can also use our Climate Viewer Reports app. It is also listed right up here, Climate Viewer Reports, under More, um, to submit your own reports. And what they look like is something like this. I'll just open that up for you real quick. So these are reports done by multiple users. Um, and you can see that they have they upload their own photos so wow that's a pretty interesting photo um but it puts a map marker there and you do that simply by submitting a report so if you haven't tried climate viewer reports those will appear on the map in our maps category section below which i'm about to get into um and then you can toggle sunlight toggle the timeline just like before right here and switch to the flat earth model right there for all you flatters um, out there i'm trying to show you a little bit of love but you know that's your thing if you'd prefer a flat map go for it so you, um, under live alerts we can look at air quality monitoring um, and see that and like i say um it's much easier to see a lot of this with uh you know a black background so now you can see the green and or yellow dots 
Yellow obviously being worse air quality, and you can see uh, particulate matter 2.5, moderate. Um, and you can see good air here, good air here, ozone. Some of these stations have different monitoring equipment. So as you click through them, like you can see this one does ozone, PM 2.5 and PM 10. Um, great air quality monitoring there. Um, the climate viewer reports, they show up right here. So this is all of the reports from 2011 to 2017. And then all I'm doing is I'm clicking on the picture and you can see that it says remove map. So if I hit collapse menus, that will shut all of these my windows down that I have open. And at the top now you'll see that it says active maps. So currently I have the air quality index current, which you can see here. Um, and I have climate viewer reports. Uh, 2011 through 2017. Underneath that, you're going to see a couple different options. There's an eyeball here, which means it's in view. If I want to turn that off pre just temporarily, I can click that and that'll get it out of the view. Same with the air quality out of the view. Um, if I want to remove it permanently, I hit the X right here and that removes it from my active maps list. If I want to turn it back on, I simply click the eye again. Um, underneath that on the other side is what looks like a little tree icon. That's where you actually have the list of all the different reports. Mysterious illness, chemtrails over Fresno, chemtrails Switzerland, uh, odd clouds, um, and you can go to each individual uh, report. So you come over here, click on that, and then it'll have a link to the actual report. And you can go over and see that on Climate Viewer Reports. So, this is a way for you to quickly zoom around to all the different uh, maps. If I want to clear all the maps that I have currently open, I just click clear maps and bam, we're back to where we started. So what do we have to offer? We have earthquakes, live earthquake monitoring, NOAA ocean buoys. Anyone with a red icon is a large map as you can see here. So these are going to take longer to load than normal. And I'll give you an example real quick by loading up the NOAA map um, buoys. Longer dependent on the speed and of your internet and your computer. But you can see all of the ocean buoys from around the world. A lot of these have wave height monitors on them. Um, so you'll be able to actually see you know what what's going on and, and I put it in the earthquake category because if there is a large earthquake and there's a tsunami associated with it you'll be able to see that in real time so pretty cool stuff um, let's go back to the map list I'm gonna turn the sunlight and the timeline off and we're gonna close that out now say I wanted to share the screen and I wanted somebody to see just this uh, let's do something interesting with this. I'm going to also go down here to live satellites and we're going to go to NASA ocean and we're going to turn on sea surface temperature. So now I'm going to come up here I'm going to scroll to the top and you can see that I have two different layers open. If I scroll down to here and I, this is what my view currently looks like and I want to share this with somebody. If I click on share, it'll actually give you a link right here that will open it up and let them view exactly what you just shared. It opens the maps you have currently. It uh, you know loads everything up, puts the screen in the same location. And that is the purpose of the sharing button, which you can find under options and instructions. Um, these sharing buttons down here simply share the app. The, this link and the short URL will share the currently loaded layers, their settings, and uh, the background layer. So whatever, however you have it set up. Now under the sea surface temperature, you see a different icon. There's sliders. These sliders allow you to, in some cases, if it's a NASA layer, you can choose the imagery date. So you can change that to a different day. Um, you can go back years, in fact. Um, simply by clicking here, you can go back to 2011, March 11th, 2011, and see what the sea surface temperature looked like then. Um, and this for comparison reasons. Then you can change the opacity of that, make it to where it's completely see-through. 
by doing this or you know bringing up a little bit you can change the contrast on it make it brighter um, you can take the color out of it by turning the saturation off so lots of fun ways to play with the imagery layers so that's the two types of um, controls for the maps that we have one will be the slider icon the other will be uh, you know the marker icon and to give an example of that, once again, these are all the ionospheric heaters in the world. This is the marker icons, and you can actually fly around and see them. But to actually see them, you're going to need a satellite. So we do that, and we close that thing back out. And then we can fly around and actually go see a whole bunch of ionospheric heaters. Like that, Tromso in Norway. Um, obviously, the Hart facility which you can see here, um, and the Arecibo Enhanced High Frequency Heating Array. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, so, and if you wanna see that in 3D, once again, you need to go down here to the bottom and turn on 3D Terrain. And that's when it'll look really cool. And you can see the bowl and everything. So that's how you work this map. Turn the base layers back off. And uh, once again, I just tap these to close them out. You also see an information icon. These information icons are also right here where it says description. If I click description, that will take you to the individual map page for that map. So you can read more about it, um, You know, get the information on it and all of that sort of thing. So we've been through that. Um, and then once again, if I want to clear all this off, just clear maps. So that's how Climate Viewer 3D works. You can go through all the different um, categories we have nuclear radiation and waste, uh, you know, nuclear meltdowns from around the world, Chernobyl, Fukushima, 2,615 nuclear detonations. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, there's a lot in here. Uh, there are several thousand hours worth of maps, um, you know, information to go through if you wanted to. Sunken ships, ancient ruins, architecture, Antarctic research bases. Uh, the list goes on and on. World War II battlefronts, uh, the American Revolution, the Civil War, Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot more in this history and science section coming soon. I got about 60 more maps to add. Um, geoscience and oceanography, plastic pollution worldwide. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So that's how you work Climate Viewer 3D. Simply choose your map, click on it by either clicking the picture or the load map button here. It puts it on the screen. You can click on that and it'll have information, plastic trash and a Google image search of uh, the Great Lakes and plastic trash. Click on that, take you to the pictures, let you see the trash. Um, pretty sad stuff. So this is your world and you should monitor it. That's the purpose of Climate Viewer 3D. That's the purpose of Climate Viewer Maps. We have a lot um, of information for you to go through um, and I hope that you do. Because knowing is half the battle, and uh, there's certainly a lot to know using Climate Viewer 3D. Um, be sure to check out the live, the two live sections right here with the satellite views. Uh, you can see a lot of stuff through that that you're not going to see anywhere else. And this combines many different sources um, from the microwave imagery um, at Mimic to uh, you know many different forms so you can actually click on these and what they'll do is bring up the timeline slider and you can actually animate them as well so that's what the timeline is for and it shows the dates below for when that is um, sometimes they're not accurate this is 2013 but this clearly is not 2013 in the image um, and uh, you can see it on another one real quick let me go and clear that one off and we'll come down here do, 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 and go to this one. 
and you can see that even though it says down here at the bottom well this one actually did line up perfectly the date and time is right up here at the top and you can see as I slide that it will animate it so sometimes these won't match up but trust me these are all pulled in real time and uh, interesting stuff to say the least all right so for some reason they haven't updated that since February we'll have to get on them about that <laughs> all right so you've seen uh, how climate viewer 3d works uh, everything is available also from the site map where you can see climate viewer 3d climate viewer reports the earth monitor has its own page my reading map which is George Stiller he does all of the hist history and science maps uh, we work together on those and the different map sections right here are listed out in text form instead of the lengthy form so you can go to any individual page and that is climate viewer maps it is a much larger site than it was before but i believe it's much more easy to navigate again your support on patreon paypal or gofundme would be greatly appreciated you, you can also check out my other website climate viewer news or weathermodificationhistory.com which you can see down here at the bottom um, and get tons more information on the topics that are covered in some of our maps um, and of course if you have any concern about uh, viewing some of these maps like uh, as you'll see in uh, the satellite section we have the US Naval Research Lab if you're concerned that the US Navy is going to be tracking what you're doing um, when you're bringing up their maps uh, then I suggest you get a VPN. ExpressVPN has a very high quality virtual private network. It masks your IP address. And that way, uh, as you're browsing these maps that are coming from governments and universities, any of the maps in the live section are that way. And uh, of course, I have that listed out as a warning. And you can see that here. Um, this section contains live maps that are either updated every few minutes, hourly, or daily. These maps are pulled from different government, university, and private sources when you load them and are subject to occasional outages. When viewing these maps, please consider that they are for informational purposes only and usage may be subject to tracking by the individual providers, which is not controllable by Climate Viewer Maps. If you're concerned about your privacy, please use a virtual private network and avoid being tracked. So the one that I use is ExpressVPN, and you can see that uh, is you know my VPN of choice right here. Um, I use it, it is pretty epic, and it works really fast. I just turned it on, and what you're gonna notice is that it doesn't change a bit of the speed on any of this stuff so it still comes up extremely fast so very fast vpn um, makes uh, browsing simple and uh, keeps you private so keep that in mind if you're concerned about your privacy while viewing any of these maps uh, that'll help you out so i hope that you guys will come to climateviewer.org and try out climate viewer maps Knowing is half the battle, and information is power. So all I ask is that you use the information on climateviewer.org and my other websites to attack ideas, not people.